Good morning and welcome to Stony Brook. Uh, the event staff has done a great job of moving all the rain clouds south of here, so I can guarantee, according to them, that there will be no rain during our ceremony. My name is Dr. Edward Feldman, and as president of the University Senate, I am honored to be your Grand Marshal for today's event. Um, here now, in the presence of the candidates for academic recognition, of our Suffolk County representatives, of members of the Stony Brook Council, of our SUNY trustee, faculty, administration, alumni, honored guests, and friends of the State University of New York at Stony Brook, the 58th commencement is hereby convened. Please rise as you are able for the singing of our national anthem that will be led by Alina Tamburini, who has a beautiful voice. I heard her yesterday. <laughs> I told you, please be seated. It is a pleasure to welcome the university's special guests who have joined us today for this ceremony. Uh, uh, New York State Senate Majority Leader, the Honorable John Flanagan. New York State Senator, the Honorable Ken P. Laval. New York State Assemblyman, the Honorable Steve Engelbright. Suffolk County Executive, the Honorable Steve Ballone. Suffolk County Legislator, the Honorable Kara Hahn. Brookhaven Town Councilwoman, the Honorable Valerie Cardwright. State University of New York Trustee, Carrie Stoller. Members of the Stony Brook Council, including Council Chair Kevin Law. Christopher Hahn. Oh. Uh, the Reverend Michael Smith. Frank Trotta, and Karen Wishnia. The president of the Alumni Association, Badal Sajay. 
the president of the graduate student organization, Ramiro uh, Malaga. The president of the undergraduate student association, Ayan Zubar. <laughs> and senior class representative, uh, Faoud Farouk. I've worked closely with President Stanley for most of the nine years of his uh, tenure at Stony Brook. This is a good man. You could not have a stronger advocate for Stony Brook than this uh, president. The degrees that you, that you will earn today will be more valuable in your lifetime because of the incredible prestige that he has brought to the university. Um, it is my distinct pleasure and my great honor to present to you the Stony Brook President Samuel L. Stanley, Jr. I would like to add my greetings to all present today, members of the faculty and staff, parents and friends of the graduates, our distinguished honorary degree recipient, and above all, the graduating class of 2018. It is now my pleasure to introduce someone whose extraordinary service to the state of New York speaks for itself. Although he's a Brooklyn resident, you'd never know it due to his tireless advocacy for Long Island. A close friend of mine and the Stony Brook family, our United States Senator, Chuck Schumer. Thank you, President Stanley. And first, let me thank President Stanley for the great job he does making Stony Brook one of the best institutions of higher learning not just on Long Island, not just in New York, but in our whole country and world. Job well done. And now, to this great class, Stony Brook 2018, congratulations! You made it, you're here. Now first, I'd like to announce my class gift. As you know, it's hard to pay for college. If you're poor, the federal government helps you out. But what about the middle class? So a few years ago, I wrote a law, it's now on the books, that says you or your parents, whoever paid for college or graduate school, can take as a full tax credit $2,500. We want to get it to $3,500. $2,500 for each year of college or graduate school, provided, in Washington there's always a provided, provided your family income is below $200,000 a year. So, if you come from a family that makes below 200,000, make sure you or mom or dad takes that credit. Last year, a third of all the people who are entitled didn't take it because it's new. And if you forgot, you can fill out a simple form to the, send it to the IRS and get back up to three years back a check in the mail for $7,500. Not too bad. Now, but what happens if you come from a family that makes above $200,000 a year? God bless you. <laughs> a word to the moms and dads. I know how you feel. A few short years ago, my wife Iris and I sat where you did, watched our daughter Jessica get that diploma. It was one of the greatest days of our lives. And you know, these days it's not easy to raise kids, so if you're like us, you think back to the tough times. We remembered when Jessica was four months old. She had 106 and a half fever. We rushed her to the hospital. They didn't think she'd make it. Praise God, she did. We remembered when we put her on the kindergarten bus for the first time. And as the bus rolled away, she ran to the back of the bus, waved out the back window, tears streaming down her little cheeks. But when Iris went to meet her on the bus's return at 2 o'clock, she bounded off the bus, happy as could be. She said, Mommy, I came back. When we went through her mind, when we talked to her that night, we realized what was going through her little brain. She thought that was it. New parents, new family, new brother and sister, new room. Then we remembered Jessie as a teenager. Well, she didn't say much to us. And when she did, we didn't understand a word she said. And then moms and dads, 
You see your daughters and sons come up on the stage, get that diploma, and become an adult before your very eyes. Congratulations to the moms and dads. <clears throat> and one more word of thanks. As we're here having a great morning at Stony Brook, there are young men and women, many from Long Island, many your age, who have enlisted, who have volunteered into our armed forces. Many of them are in dangerous places like Iraq, Afghanistan, and they are risking their lives for our freedom and our American way of life. Let's have a round of applause for them. Now, to this great class of 2018 Stony Brook, you are graduating at a time of enormous change around the country, around the world. Profound economic changes, profound social changes, the world is moving so very, very fast. In the old days, for instance, you graduated from college and the odds were pretty high that you'd have the same job or work in the same field for the next 40 years. That's not so true anymore. Many of you will have several jobs, even several different careers. And along with these economic changes, the internet has put so much information at your fingertips that sometimes it's hard to figure out what's important and to distinguish between what's true and what isn't. Even around the world, there have been amazing changes, many not for the better. When I graduated from college, words like terrorism and mass shootings were never even heard of. But the good news is this. Your generation is better equipped to deal with and adapt to all these new changes than any generation before you. You've gotten a great education here at Stony Brook. You know, only one-third of all young people your age will even get a college degree, and yours is better than just about every other one. You've got great families that'll have your backs through thick and thin. And just think of this, you're the first generation to be totally immersed in all our new technology. You know, your parents, your teachers, me, we try to get used to this new technology, but it's new to us. But you, you were born into it. Technology is to your generation like water is to a fish. You've been swimming in it your whole lives. So you have so many advantages. And that's why you're better equipped than any generation to overcome the obstacles these, this new world presents, to seize the opportunities it affords. You're better equipped to pursue your passions, dream big dreams, and maybe even accomplish big things. I know right now, though, sitting in your seats, you may not be sure what's going to come next. With so much of the world changing, it sometimes, sometimes might feel like you're jumping into an abyss. But the key, graduates, is not to fear the unknown, not to fear change. Embrace it, relish it, soak it up. Don't let one stand back, setback stand in your way. Because if you embrace change and don't let the fear of failure deter you, don't let any obstacle stand in your way, the odds are very high you'll succeed. Now, how do I know? Well, I experienced things like this when I graduated from college. When I was seated at college graduation many decades ago, as you are today, I had just learned that I had won a scholarship to travel all around the world, all expenses paid for a whole year. For me, it was the opportunity of a lifetime. I was a kid from Brooklyn. I had never been out of the country before. But at the same time, I met a girl, and I fell in love. Ah. So class, I had to decide. Do I go around the world on the all-expense-paid scholarship for a whole year? Or do I stay home with the girl, my first true love? Class of 2018, what would you have done? <laughs> President Stanley, the class is divided. <coughs> I stayed home with the girl. Don't clap there, you romantics. <clears throat> the story unfolds. That summer, she went on a brief vacation, and I went to the airport to meet her on her return. As soon as she got off the plane, I saw by the look on her face, something was the matter. She dumped me by Labor Day. <laughs> there I was, 
No scholarship. No trip around the world. No girl. I said to myself, what a loser you are. You're never gonna make anything of yourself. Give it up. It's over. Forget about it. And in fact, I stayed in my house for several months, moped around, felt sorry for myself. But somehow, I picked myself up, dusted myself off, overcame that setback, and a few years later, I found myself seated at graduation once again, this time from law school. But on the way home from law school, graduates, I told mom and dad I was not gonna join that fancy law firm like we had planned. I told them I loved politics. I told them my dream was to run for office. My parents were shocked. My mother was particularly disappointed. You see, I came from a working class family. My father was an exterminator, never went to college, didn't make much money, and the law firm was paying $400 a week, which in those days was more money than my family had ever seen. So, that fall, at the age of 23, I took that gamble, and against very long odds, ran for the New York State Assembly and had three opponents. There was the party machine candidate, there was a neighborhood activist, and then there was my mother who was telling all her friends not to vote for me. So as she said, I'd get this dumb idea of being a politician out of my big thick head. Well, graduates, a few years earlier, I sure didn't get that girl, but that November, I won the election. So, to this great class of 2018, on this day of your achievement, my advice to you is take that risk, don't let any setback deter you. Don't let fear of failing deter you. You know, for those of us who've gotten older, some of the more difficult moments are what I call the what ifs. When you look back and you say, what if I had only done this? What if I had only gone there? So my advice to the class of 2018 is simple. Go for it. You're about to cast off into the unknown. Sometimes it can surely seem very scary, but you've got great assets, this great education, great families, a knowledge of technology. So garner up your courage, garner up your strength, put aside your doubts, take a chance. And if you do, it is not only my hope, it is not only my prayer, it is indeed my confidence that you will find true success and true joy in life. To this great class of 2018, congratulations. Good luck. Godspeed, and don't you forget, go for it. You're right, I should have taken the trip. Another round of applause for Senator Schumer. And I want to say State Senator Flanagan, majority, the majority leader of the Senate, has joined us. John, thank you. So, okay, class of 2018, today you crossed the finish line, receiving a degree, and I'm not going to be modest here, from one of the best universities in the world. Our faculty and staff work hard to help every student succeed, but I don't think anyone can say that graduating from Stony Brook is easy. You have met that challenge, and your family should be proud of you and what you have accomplished. You are among more than 7,300 students that will receive a total of 7,450 degrees from Stony Brook University this year. And that is an all-time record on both counts. Our graduates span 73 countries, 43 states, and range in age from 18 to 77. 77-year-old here today? Stand. Ah, here we go. Thank you. And I want to say I'm proud of each and every one of you. And your Stony Brook degree represents a very, very, very good investment. 
we were recently ranked number one, the number one public school in the Northeast for return on investment with increased earnings of approximately $1 million for in-state and out-of-state students. And that return on investment is realized by so many of our students. I'm proud to say that a recent Stanford University study ranked Stony Brook University number three in the country among all colleges and universities and number one in the Northeast for our ability to take students from the poorest 20% of income and move them into the top 20% of income after they graduate. And one more thing. Data reported last month from the National Student Clearinghouse showed nationally that there remained a significant gap in the graduation rates between black students versus white students, a gap of nearly 20 percentage points. At Stony Brook University, there is no gap. That gap has been eradicated, it's gone, and that's not because anyone's rate is lower, it's because everyone's rate is higher than the national average. So class of 2018, the data shows that employers and graduate schools recognize the value of your degree. And that helps explain why 92% of you will be employed or in graduate school six months from now. But as pleased as we are with that, I think your parents may applaud that one, actually. <laughs> but as pleased as we are with that statistic, we will continue to push for excellence and continue to make your Stony Brook degree and your university something that you can always be proud of. You should expect nothing less. And of course, we have great expectations for you as well. After all, the success of our alumni is one of the ways, seminal ways in which we are defined as a university. Your successes and your accomplishments, your good works are an integral part of how the world views us and a fundamental measure of our effectiveness as a university. So class of 2018, we are pulling for you and I know you won't let us down. Why am I so confident? because so many of your classmates have already done amazing things. Each year, I like to highlight just a few of the incredible graduates at Stony Brook University. I really would like to feature all of you, but I did the math, and even at five minutes per student, it would significantly prolong today's ceremony by about nine days. So instead, I'm going to focus on just two. Ann Lynn, would you please stand, Ann? Ann Lynn will graduate with honors in biochemistry and economics. Ann is the first in her family to attend college. She grew up in Farmingdale and now lives in Flushing, New York. She has had an incredible academic career at Stony Brook with research experience in multiple laboratories at Stony Brook itself and at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory where her studies on genes associated with survival from cancer has been published already with her as a first author. In her spare time, she has learned to code, and she has become a star at hackathons. Her program to help laboratories share vital reagents won Best Social Hack at a Caltech competition. And she was honored with Best Hack at Rochester University for creating a web platform that allows patients to compile all of their medical records. Based on her outstanding academic achievement and her extraordinary research efforts, she was recognized nationally by being named as a prestigious Goldwater Scholar and has been selected as a HerCampus.com 22 Under 22 Most Inspiring College Women. <laughs> Anne has received a Fulbright Scholarship to study for one year in Norway as she pursues her goal of obtaining a PhD focusing on genetics and cancer biology. And congratulations on all of your accomplishments and best of luck as you pursue your dreams. Lydia Sonatas, Lydia, would you rise? Lydia Sonatas is a graduate of Brooklyn James Madison High School, a first generation student and a proud member of Stony Brook's EOP program. An economics major with minors in business management and international studies, she has made the dean's list every semester at Stony Brook University while working at two jobs all through college to help cover the cost of her education. 
Given her passion for international studies, Lydia applied for and received a Gilman Scholarship with help support a month of study in China. But the best was yet to come. Last November, Lydia received word that she had been awarded a 2018 Charles B. Rangel International Affairs Fellowship. This highly competitive award supports extraordinary individuals seeking a career in the United States Foreign Service. The award consists of approximately $95,000 to pursue a master's degree in international studies and two internships, one with a member of Congress on issues regarding foreign affairs, and the second in 2019 where she will be sent overseas to work in a U.S. Embassy to get hands-on experience. At the completion of her master's program, Lydia will become a United States diplomat, where she, helps to, where she hopes to focus on East Asia, the Middle East, and East Africa. Lydia, congratulations on being Stony Brook. Congratulations on being Stony Brook's first Wrangell International Affairs Fellow, and thank you for your drive to make a difference in the world. Now, one more thing. I want to say a special thanks to 10 more seniors. They can't be here today, but they are all members of Stony Brook's women's lacrosse team. There they are. This team, under coach Joe Spelina, is undefeated, 20 and zero, ranked number one in the nation, and is pursuing the national championship. They're all in Boston right now, where they play Boston College tomorrow, and I know we all wish them the best of luck. And I just want to say, class of 2018, the senior students athletes on this team and their teammates have the same characteristics you're graduating with. They are committed to excellence, and they're willing to work hard to achieve that goal. And they can compete with and beat anyone from any other college at any other university at any time or any place. It's time to acknowledge one more group. I would like to extend a special word of thanks to the parents, relatives, and friends of our graduates who have helped them in ways material and otherwise to reach the academic goal they have attained today. I know that it has not always been easy for you and that in some cases it required sacrifices to make this day possible. But I also know the joy that a family feels when a son or daughter, grandchild, niece, nephew, or close friend achieves an important goal. And in fact, today, I feel that particularly because my youngest daughter graduates from medical school in St. Louis right now, essentially today. Congratulations, Katie Stanley. So, thank you. So, I'm so happy to share all of that joy with the parents. So, to the graduates, let me say years from now, when you think about this day, and you will, what you remember most is not the commencement speeches or the details of the ceremony, but being with your loved ones, friends, and family members, and their joy at your success. And that's the way it should be. And don't worry, I'm gonna have a celebratory dinner with my daughter tonight, so it'll be good. So, beginning with move-in day, or your first day parking in South Pilot. orientation, and new student convocation. From your first class, maybe in Javits, and your first college laboratory, to the Roth Pond Regatta, the Seawolf Showcase, Wolfstock, Strawberry Fest, Diversity Day, the Eureka Celebration, <laughs> the Wolfie Land Carnival, working out at the Campus Rec Center, attending amazing concerts with Panic at the Disco, Walk the Moon, Future, Cash Cash, Fetty Wap, DNCE, Post Malone, 21 Savage, 
or interacting with Stony Brook guests like Neil deGrasse Tyson, Trevor Noah, Soledad O'Brien, Billy Joel, Joe Biden, or Michael J. Fox. I hope your journey at Stony Brook University has empowered you to make a real difference as you go out to improve our world. Thank you so much and congratulations again. We now begin the conferral of degrees with our honorary degree recipient. Today's honorary degree recipient has distinguished herself uh, by con her contributions to her field, to society, and to the university. We are honored with the opportunity to recognize her achievements. Conferring honorary degrees on behalf of the State University of New York, our State University of New York trustee, Carrie Stoller, President Samuel L. Stanley, Jr., and Provost Michael Bernstein. Will Tracy K. Smith please come forward? You are an acclaimed poet, author, and educator, dedicated to sharing your passion for po poetry and prose with the world. Your love of poetry started early having been inspired by reading Emily Dickinson in the fifth grade. In 2003, you published your first collection of prize-winning poetry, The Body's Question. In 2012, you received the Pulitzer Prize in poetry for your third collection, Life on Mars. Your work has been revered for its ability to forge connections, blending personal observations on pop culture with your take on weightier universal themes such as science and religion. In 2017, you were chosen as the 22nd Poet Laureate Consultant in Poetry to the Library of Congress of the United States, giving you the opportunity to further raise the awareness of poetry and its value in our culture. In addition to your role as a poet, you are an esteemed professor dedicated to educating people in using the art of poetic prose. As professor of the humanities and director of the creative writing program at Princeton University, you guide a generation in finding and using their voice to empower themselves and others. For the remarkable impact you have made as an ambassador for poetry and as an educator, the State University of New York is privileged to award you the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the State University Board of Trustees, the faculty of the State University of New York concurring, I confer upon you an honorary degree, honoris causa, and invest upon you with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. In token thereof, I direct that you be provided with a diploma and vested with the hood representative of the specific degree conferred. Thank you. <clears throat> I am deeply honored and, and moved um, to be welcomed into the community of graduates of this great institution. And I also am um, eager to congratulate the graduating class of 2018. Um, you have done so much even to get here. 
right? You know, the, the excellence that you've demonstrated um, and the curiosity and the discipline that has gotten you through your time here is remarkable. I want to talk to you just a little bit about language, which is my passion. Language is the medium of poetry, and it's a tool we live in, a tool by which we explain ourselves to others and, more importantly, to ourselves. I hope that you will love language the way a poet loves language. Why? Because if you do not, if you don't hold your thoughts and your words to a standard of clarity, intelligence, and integrity. And if you don't hold the language that enters your ears and mind and your imagination to such a standard, whole regions of your inner life will fall into dormancy. If you're content to let the market for products and services, apps and devices, delimit your terms of need, of discernment, of wonder and worth, you will be fit to buy, rate, like, follow, and share, but not to envision, discern, imagine, empathize, interrogate, or resist. So, I know you're going off to do marvelous things in every possible field, but I hope that you will also choose, like a poet, to live in a vocabulary that names things in their realness and their, at times, troubling complexity. That idea of troubling is what I'd like to leave you with. To trouble is to worry, to bother, to disturb, to agitate. But it is also to mine, to stir up, to plumb, to animate. In the realm of art and myth, renewal often arises only after a purposeful troubling, as in the great spiritual wade in the water, which promises deliverance to believers in the phrase, God's going to trouble the waters. I think every poem and every mindful act of language has the potential to trouble something to bring about discovery, upheaval, transformation, and change. So no matter what else you are, be poets, pushing your words and your thoughts, your wishes and your dreams to a place where troubling is possible. And because I think poets are most eloquent in poems, I thought I would close with one um, called Wade in the Water. Maybe the only thing that you might want to know about this poem is that I was moved to write it after attending a ring shout, a performance of the kinds of spirituals that I just described. Wade in the water. One of the women greeted me. I love you, she said. She didn't know me, but I believed her. And a terrible new ache rolled over in my chest, like in a room where the drapes have been swept back. I love you, I love you, as she continued down the hall, past other strangers, each feeling pierced suddenly by pillars of heavy light. I love you throughout the performance, in every hand clap, every stomp, I love you in the rusted iron chains someone was made to drag until love let them be unclasped and left empty in the center of the ring. I love you in the water where they pretended to wade, singing that old blood deep song that dragged us to those banks and cast us in. I love you the angles of it scraping at each throat, shouldering past the swirling dust motes in those beams of light that whatever we now knew we could let ourselves feel knew to climb. Oh, 
woods. Oh, dogs. Oh, tree. Oh, gun. Oh, girl, run. Oh, miraculous many gone. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Is this love the trouble you promised? Thank you very much. As our university's provost, it's my privilege to present its most distinguished undergraduate honor in recognition of Ward Melville, the first chair of the Stony Brook Council. The Ward Melville Valedictorian Award is given to the graduating seniors who have attained the highest academic average during four years at our university. Will the current Stony Brook Council Chair, Kevin Law, and President of the Alumni Association, Bedell Sajay, please come forward and join me in acknowledging the outstanding academic achievements of these graduates. And will the class of 2018's Ward Melville valedictorians please come forward. Kian Avila, biochemistry. Christopher Giuliano, Applied Mathematics and Statistics. Andrew Kumpfbeck, Biomedical Engineering. Nicole Lotto, Women's and Gender Studies. Jessica McKay, Social Work. Brian Musmacher, Biomedical Engineering. Hong Kit Ng, Biology. Roy Raheb Kilo, Biology. Alessandro Riccio, Biochemistry. Patrick John Smith, Political Science. And I would now like to invite Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone to assist with the H. Lee Dennison Award, named in honor of Suffolk County's first chief executive. This award is presented by our university to the graduating seniors who have entered Stony Brook as transfer students, who have completed at least 60 credits of letter grade work at Stony Brook and attained the highest academic average in that work. Will the following awardees please come forward? Alexander McKillop, social work. Carolyn Parker, French language and literature. And not in attendance today, Kyle Brown, Studio Art, Alexander Byrne, Psychology, and Natalia Payone, Biology. Please join me in congratulating these outstanding graduates and wishing them well. Okay, we're going to get a picture of you over here. in the back. Degrees with distinction are conferred upon candidates for the Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Bachelor of Engineering degrees 
who have completed at least 55 credits at Stony Brook have letter grades assigned to at least 80% of their coursework and attained the requisite GPA in their programs. The levels of distinction are cum laude, graduating with honor and representing the 85th percentile of all our students. Magna cum laude, graduating with great honor and representing the 93rd percentile. And summa cum laude, graduating with the highest honor, representing the 98th percentile of all students. Attainment of a degree with distinction is indicated on each of these students' diplomas and on their permanent academic records. Last night, the university honored these graduates at the baccalaureate honors convocation, during which the stoles that each of them are wearing today were presented. Will the candidates graduating with distinctions of cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude, please stand and be recognized. Congratulations. Thank you. And now please join me in welcoming to the podium the Interim Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students, Dr. Richard Gatto. Good morning. It is my honor to introduce Ishania Garadia, our student speaker. Each year, the student speaker is selected from a pool of submitted speeches provided through the annual Senior Speaker Competition. All entries are reviewed and judged by a committee of faculty and staff. They made an excellent choice when they selected Ishani. Ishani from Princeton, New Jersey, is graduating summa cum laude with a bachelor's degree in multidisciplinary studies with concentrations in biology, chemistry, and Asian American studies with a minor in South Asian studies. She is also a proud member of both the National Society of Collegiate Scholars and the Phi Beta Kappa Society. Three years ago, Ashani was admitted to the highly competitive Scholars for Medicine and Women in Science and Engineering Honors Programs. Scholars for Medicine offers select undergraduate students an opportunity to complete a combined bachelor's MD program while participating in medical school classes and activities. Students accepted to this program are reserved a seat in Stony Brook School of Medicine, and only a handful of students are offered this special opportunity each year. Even with a busy academic schedule, Ashani eagerly embraced campus life. In her first year, she became a student researcher in the School of Medicine's Department of Dermatology. As a teaching assistant, and tutor for the Academic Success and Tutoring Center and the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences, she helped other students to excel. Driven by her passion for music, Ashani joined the Stony Brook Opera Chorus and Yuva, the South Asian Fusion Acapella Group. Last year, she placed second in our Stony Brook Idol competition. Following graduation, Ashani plans to incorporate music in her treatment of patients. We wish her well as she pursues her medical degree. Please join me in welcoming Ashani Garadia. Good morning, my fellow sea wolves, friends, faculty, and staff. It humbles me to be able to stand before you all and congratulate the spring 2018 graduating class. Before I begin today, I would like, a, like to take a few seconds to thank the one person who I would be nothing without, my mother. Mom, a few seconds isn't enough for me to summarize how much you have done for me and how it's left an impact. And I don't know where you are, but I want you to know that I am who I am and where I am because of you. You are my backbone, my heart, and my life. I love you. And now for my speech. 
Stony Brook, a place which thrives on innovation, forward thinking, and intellectual curiosity. Stony Brook, a place which is a crucible of progress and ideas. Stony Brook, a place which takes pride in its diversity and fervor to continually unite the world's academics. Stony Brook, a place which I proudly call my home. As we graduate college and matriculate to the real world, we tend to feel alone and lost. We are leaving our home and trying to make it on our own. And as scary as it is, we always hear the same basic advice. Reach for the stars. Don't get caught up in the trap of comparison. Make failure a catalyst for self-growth. And although I believe in all of this advice, I am not standing here today to share with you what parents, guardians, and educators will remind you for the rest of your lives. I'm here to tell you my love story. <laughs> my university education was much like a first relationship. As a senior in high school, I was looking at Stony Brook Scholars for Medicine program, and I thought to myself, I will never get in. The odds were against me. I was a brown girl from a super competitive high school. I was out of state, and the program seemed to take mostly in-state students. But hey, go Jersey! My parents told me believe, so I applied. If they could make it fresh off the boat, I already had a sailing start. Before Stony Brook, I had gone on many dates. But when I drove to Stony Brook for the first time, I fell in love. My love was reciprocated to me when Stony Brook got down on one knee and proposed to me on April 1st. <laughs> it would be nice if I could say that the first year of our marriage was all fine and dandy. But truth be told, it was not. The honeymoon phrase of freshman orientation was great until reality kicked in. I had come to Stony Brook as a timid bride. I had never been away from home, and I didn't really know how to express myself. All of a sudden, I found myself 200 miles away from my lifeline. I felt like I fell off the boat, and all I could do at this point was tread water. But Stony Brook was my soulmate. We were going to make this work. With the help of friends, faculty, and of course my parents, I slowly began to realize my potential. I realized that Stony Brook is not there to tell me that I'm perfect and not there to tell me that I do everything right, but to show me, hey, you messed up, but you can try again. Look, path A didn't work, but path B will. Stony Brook reminded me that change is inevitable and that we need to embrace it. The one thing that I did right with Stony Brook was I never regretted our relationship. And pretty soon, it began to blossom. So as we began to get to know each other, we figured out shortcuts to life sciences and North P. We took 2 a.m. strolls to talk about life. We screamed at midnight when life got super stressful and feasted on midnight breakfasts. We watched our first home, the Union, be torn down. But we also enjoyed the journey as we built our new home. East and the renovated library were beautiful. We concocted creations to sail across Roth Pond, and we indulged in so, so many strawberries. Stony Brook showed me that the poem I wrote to get into college is the start of a passion. I began writing songs and music. Stony Brook showed me that I didn't need to leave singing behind as a pre-med student. I joined Yuva, took vocal lessons, and even performed in the opera. Stony Brook showed me that I didn't need to lose touch with my roots. I did a minor in South Asian studies. Stony Brook showed me that I was more than the knowledge that I spat out on exams. It gave me incredible research opportunities. Stony Brook showed me what it meant to be a woman in STEM. I was guided by amazing mentors in the WISE program. Stony Brook showed me that I didn't know everything, especially when it came to connecting the dots in Orgo. But most importantly, Stony Brook showed me who I really was and the young woman that I was striving to be. The heartbeat of Stony 
became my new lifeline. For many of us, Stony Brook is our first love. Even if we go on to different places, the friends we've made, the memories we've shared, the tears we've cried, and the prices we've paid will never be forgotten. We may fall in love again, but our first taught us lessons. It made us better. It helped us discover who we truly are, the ultimate goal of any educational institute. Our fate lies at the intersection of knowledge and passion. As sea wolves, it is our duty to move society forward and advance causes which we are passionate about. During my time at Stony Brook, I saw a community of people all doing what they love, doing what they are passionate about for reasons beyond themselves, for reasons beyond academic profit, for reasons just beyond. They do what they love to initiate change, whether it be global, societal, or individual. The people of Stony Brook do it to see progress. As I walk down the zebra path, I see a place which has fostered my creativity and demanded me to constantly change, constantly progress, far beyond expectations. <laughs> so to answer the everlasting question, what are sea wolves? <laughs> I will end with a few words of thought. They are anomalies, freaks of nature which cannot be tamed. They are an everlasting growl in a competitive world. They are passionate pleas for change. So what are sea wolves? We are sea wolves. So class of 2018, now it's your turn. What's a sea wolf? I'm a sea wolf. I still can't hear you. What's a sea wolf? I'm a sea wolf. Congratulations, graduating class of 2018. Thank you and congratulations, uh, Sonny. It was a great, uh, great talk. Uh, we now invite President Stanley to join the senior class representative, Fuad Farouk, at the lectern for a special presentation from your class of 2018. <clears throat> Good morning, President Stanley esteemed platform members, faculty, parents, family, friends, and fellow students. Congratulations, class of 2018. My name is Fouad Farouk. I am the senior class senator, and I'm excited to present this year's senior class gift. In the 2004 to 2005 academic year, the class representative and the office of the dean of students establish the student giving campaign. It allowed students an opportunity to give back and show their support for Stony Brook. Over the years, students have responded by raising thousands of dollars to fund meaningful initiatives on our campus. They have supported scholarships, student life, the advanced, <clears throat> they advanced the research uh, on the university and service missions and we've helped to restore communities during times of need. Under the leadership of the Senior Legacy Council, the class of 2018 mobilized to continue this important tradition. As a result of, <clears throat> of their leadership and vision, over 850 seniors contributed to this year's senior class gift. You can identify these super seniors by their red and black generosity cords that we're donning. It's awesome. I would like to thank the members of the council and ask them to stand in recognition of their good and important work. The members of the Senior Legacy Council are Claire Finnegan, <laughs> Theodora Panagos, Michael Watts, Matthew McDermott, Monica Rahman, Lydia Sinaitis, Timothy Samuel, Michael Degati, Eugene Hehemeko, and Mavika Singh.
<clears throat> As contributors, we are not only helping to leave our mark here at Stony Brook University, but we're also demonstrating our citizenship to the world and we're taking the first step in becoming active, loyal alumni. Come on. <clears throat> I'm excited to report that the senior class has raised more than $21,000 to support the Stony Brook Fund for Excellence, General Scholarships, the School of Medicine, the School of Nursing, the Marching Band, <laughs> Student Life, the Stoller Center, and so many more important parts of our university. <clears throat> Dr. Stanley, as the senior class representative, I am thrilled to present you with a check to the Stony Brook Foundation. We hope that our contribution will allow us to leave a living legacy to the university and the community. To my fellow graduates, thank you for contributing and I look forward to seeing you on homecoming on October 20th, 2018. And now to the presentation of the candidates. Every year, master's and bachelor's candidates are individually acknowledged during their department, college, school, or program convocations. Today's candidates will be acknowledged as a group here and presented to President Stanley by their deans. I invite first the dean of the School of Nursing, Dr. Lee Japolitos, to begin the presentation of our candidates. Candidates for the Bachelor of Science, the Master of Science degrees in the School of Nursing, please stand. President Stanley, I have the distinct honor to present to you this year's School of Nursing candidates. <laughs> candidates, please be seated. It's my, dis it's my pleasure to now introduce the Dean of the School of Social Welfare, Dr. Jacqueline Mondros. <laughs> Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science and Master of Social Work degrees in the School of Social Welfare please stand? President Stanley, with great pleasure, I present to you this year's School of Social Welfare candidates. Please be seated. Please welcome Dr. Carlos Vidal, Interim Dean of the School of Health, Technology, and Management. Will the candidates for the Baccalaureate of Science and Master Science degree in the School of Health Technology Management please stand?
President Stanley, I present to you this year's candidates from the School of Health Technology and Management. Candidates, please be seated. It is with great pleasure I introduce the Vice Provost for Graduate and Professional Education and Dean of the Graduate School, Dr. Ch Charles Tabor. Will the candidates for the Master of Arts in Liberal Studies, the Master of Professional Studies, the Master of Arts in Teaching, the Master of Science in Human Resource Management, the Master of Arts in Higher Education Administration, Postmaster Certificates in Educational Leadership and School District Business Leadership, and Advanced Graduate Certificates from the School of Professional Development, please stand. President Stanley, I present to you this year's School of Pro Professional Development candidates. <laughs> candidates, please be seated. I now invite Dr. Lawrence Swanson, Interim Dean of the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences, to come forward. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science, Master of Science, Master of Arts from the School of Marine and At Atmospheric Sciences please stand. <laughs> Go Somas! <laughs> President Stanley, I'm proud to present to you the School and Marine of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences candidates. Candidates, please be seated. Please now welcome the Dean of the School of Journalism, Dr. Howard Schneider. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree from the School of Journalism please stand? President Stanley, I am enormously proud to present you this year's candidates, enthusiastic candidates from the School of Journalism. You may be seated. Thank you so much. It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Manuel London, the Dean of the College of Business. Will this year's candidates for the Bachelor of Science, Master of Science in Accounting, Master of Business Administration, and Master of Science in Finance degrees in the College of Business please stand? <laughs> President Stanley, I present to you the College of Business candidates. Candidates, you may now be seated. I now invite Dr. Fotis Sotaropoulos, Dean of the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences, to present his candidates. Will the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Engineering, Bachelor of Science, Master of Science, and Advanced Graduate Certificates in the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences please rise? President Stanley, it is with great pleasure and immense pride that I present to you the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences candidates. Congratulations. Please welcome Dean Dr. Sasa Kopp, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. Will the candidates from the College of Arts and Sciences receiving the Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, Master of Music, Master of Science, Master of Arts, Master of Fine Arts, and Advanced Certificates, please loudly stand. <laughs> Pre 
President Stanley, I proudly present and loudly present this year's graduates from the College of Arts and Sciences. At this time, I will invite all candidates for all degrees, bachelor's, master's, and advanced certificates from all the colleges, schools, and programs, please to rise. <laughs> President Stanley, I have the honor to present to you these candidates, and I respectfully request that you confer upon them the degrees and certificates for which they are qualified. By the authority vested in me, by the Board of Trustees, and upon recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon all of you who have completed the respective requirements the degree of Master of Arts, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Science, Master of Science in Accounting, Master of Science in Finance, Master of Music, Master of Social Work, Master of Arts in Liberal Studies, Master of Arts in Higher Education Administration, Master of Professional Studies, Master of Arts in Teaching, Master of Business Administration, Master of Philosophy, Master of Public Health, Advanced, certificate, advanced Graduate Certificates, the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, and the degree of Bachelor of Engineering with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations. <laughs> Graduates, you may now turn your tassels from right to left, and if you so choose, toss your caps. Congratulations. And now pick up your caps. Yeah. <laughs> Before we close, I'd once again like to extend a special word of thanks to the parents, relatives, and friends of our graduates who have helped them in ways material and otherwise to realize the academic goal they obtained today. I invite all of the family members and friends, if they can, to stand and be recognized for their efforts in making this day a reality for our Stony Brook University graduates. Congratulations to each and every one of you and to all of your friends and family who are here celebrating with you today. I now invite everyone to remain standing and join Alina Tamburini in singing Stony Brook's alma mater, which can be found in your program on page 80.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. Congratulations.